Good afternoon and welcome to the National Urban League's Digital Career Success Series brought to you by Urban League Jobs Network and today's sponsor, Marriott International. Today's topic is Mastering the Career Fair, and I am your host, Jody Brockington. And last, our last DCSS, we talked about your brand and your image in Dripping with Success with Ron Donovan, who spoke about what to wear at a career fair, how to look every day, dressing for that next job, dressing for success, and dressing as who you are and what you represent. Today we are continuing that story with Mastering the Career Fair. We have a great guest for you from Marriott and I will introduce him shortly. His name is Andy Chavez and he is the Senior Executive of Youth Strategies and Partnerships with Marriott International. He has more experience in this space than most of us probably on the phone and luckily for us he's been a liaison to the National Urban League um, and probably many other organizations, professional organizations that many of you are part of. So he's very familiar with many of you on our call today. Um, what is important about mastering the career fair is that we all show up at career fairs, our schools have it, our businesses have it, um, and even our National Urban League Conference that we're hoping all of you are coming to um, in Columbus, Ohio this August. But are you ever really prepared enough? And Andy's going to give us some tips. You know, how do you come? We always say bring some, you know, information, tell us about yourself, you should know who's there, come to this workshop, are you going to get a headshot done? But Andy will tell us definitely what we need to do. We'd like you to take a few polls first that will help Andy guide us through this wonderful presentation. So, first poll, tell me about yourself. Select one of these following. So all of you, please click in. So it appears that most of you are already working and some are still in school, I wish I was you. And some of you are still exploring options and that should be a lot of you. <laughs> Great. And next, I will bring Andy up to kind of guide us through the rest of this. There's a wonderful video that we will see as well. And then please remember to start putting in questions that you might have for the end for Q&A uh, that Andy and I can definitely make sure we answer uh, anything specific about the Urban League career fair and career fairs in general. Andy? Okay, good morning and uh, good afternoon everyone and, and Jody thank you very much and, and Clarissa thank you for uh, doing the background and helping us out here present uh, welcome everyone to mastering the career fair um, this is always an important uh, discussion among friends or runs professionals uh, you're looking for what's out there what's what what the opportunities are you may be in an opportunity right now where maybe the growth is not what you're looking for so you're out exploring uh, so this is something that you know all of us uh, think about. How do I, how am I successful in this digital age, uh, mastering the career fair? So here's to the journey. I'm going to cover um, uh, the next um, uh, uh, segment is the agenda, uh, what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Marriott. I've been with the company going on 29 years. Uh, we're going to cover a couple of, of things that hopefully um, you are aware of and maybe some that you're not. Uh, what, are, what does your resume say about you? Uh, create a plan for who you want to visit. Uh, have a plan. That's hugely important. Uh, but do the research of the companies, but not just the companies, the profiles. If you're looking for finance and accounting, do you know what kind of finance and accounting opportunities there are for the company that piques your interest? Okay. And what is new with the company? Again, it goes along with the research. What's the cutting edge? You know, what are they, you know, on Fortune 500 uh, companies, best companies to work for? Are they, um, you know, had a huge acquisition, um, opened up a new piece, line of business, acquired a company, whatever it may be. Um, at, in, at career fairs, you're going to have companies that offer interviewing, some that are doing screening, but 
every career fair visit or booth visit is an opportunity for networking. Uh, so we're going to talk a little about that. And then, you know, we're now in the digital age where, you know, everything and probably everyone on the line has applied online, right? So what is that black hole? How, what are those best practices? So we're going to talk about uh, focus and we're going to talk about follow-up. So some of the best practices for how to do um, career fairs. But before we do that, I just want to do a little plug on Merit International and show you a short little video about uh, about our company. And uh, hopefully uh, this tells you a little bit about who we are. Excellent. Well, hopefully uh, uh, most of you on the line have heard of Merit International. We've been a partner of National Urban League for many years. We have partnered with young professionals for um, a long time. And I think young professionals are, are one of the best things the National Urban League has going. Uh, so we are always interested in meeting you uh, and meeting, uh, sharing with you opportunities within Marriott. Uh, so ground rules, uh, speak up, ask me questions, use the chat box, right? Um, and what interests you? So, um, you know, you think about Marriott, a lot of folks think Chef Hats and Bellman, um, but there's an international business that goes on behind that front desk and at our properties and globally, uh, not just at, at our properties, but at headquarters, which we're based in Bethesda, Maryland, which is a suburb of Washington, D.C. We have regional offices around the world. And, uh, you know, we hire a lot of different uh, opportunities. So uh, ground rules is let's, uh, let's chat. Um, so super. Uh, next slide. All right, so this is me, um, a little about me. Uh, I went to Virginia Tech. Um, I work at Marion International. The hotel that you see on the top right-hand side, that was the first hotel that I uh, was employed in with Marriott. I did a six-week stint there as a uh, management trainee, and um, from there I actually came back twice, once in operations, uh, once in human resources. Uh, I am very involved with youth initiatives. Um, so when we think of, and I know the names have changed, but the Urban League, uh, we have the Young Professionals, we have uh, we used to have the New Lights program, I think that name has changed. Uh, same thing with like National Black MBA Association, they have Leaders of Tomorrow, I do DECA. I actually am the chair of the National Advisory Board for DECA. Um, we partner with a lot of industry associations, American Hotel and Lodging Association, uh, National Restaurant Associations, Educational Foundation. Uh, I'm a human resources professional, so SHRM is big for us. Um, so, you know, what's your story? Uh, and I think whenever you go to a career fair, uh, folks want to know what's your story. Uh, me, I've been with the industry in the industry for many years, and I've worked uh, both in operations and now at headquarters for what an 18 years now. I've been a college recruiter for about 17 years, and I've done so many career fairs uh, across the country and the globe. And I've met outstanding individuals, and some prepared and some not so prepared. Uh, but both can have an opportunity 
uh, to open a door with an organization. So, um, okay, so quick poll just to get a feeling. And I think the first poll might have revealed uh, what our answer is going to be here. But um, here's a quick question, and I'll and I'll just give you a caveat. Um, when I was, so I'm going to age myself, which I think I already was in my introduction. Um, but when I was going to school, um, there was about uh, four fifths. 70% of us had a job um, before graduating high school. Uh, today, that's about 40%. Um, so there are some important skills, workplace skills, soft skills that are, that are developed or even introduced to in that first job. Um, so one thing that I encourage if there's any college students out there, um, do the internships, do the field studies, um, get some of those skills. So. Um, so the poll results, 58% are employed now, 42% uh, are not. So definitely, and I'm sure of the 58%, there's many of you that are looking uh, and curious, you know, it's always greener on the other side, um, on the other side of the mountain, the hill, I forget what the saying is, but okay, so um, let's get started. So what's in your resume? Why do I ask that question? What I'm asking in what's in your resume is not what it says on a piece of paper, okay? Um, and, and let's get back to a couple basics, okay? Uh, when I look at a resume and I see a Penn State or I see a, see a Bethune uh, Cookman College or I see a, a Pembroke or I see Florida State or I see Harvard or whatever it is, you know what? Unless you're, unless I'm a law firm in a high end, uh, law uh, office in New York City that only is going after Yale or Harvard or, you know, the top, okay, maybe w what school you went to matters. For the most part, for me as a recruiter, you know what, that four-year diploma or even a two-year, what that tells me is that you stuck to something for four years and you completed it. Now, it might have taken you five years or whatever, but I've been working on projects for six, seven years, um, so can you stick to something, okay? Um, again, when I talk about what's in your resume, okay, we're looking for leaders. Most management positions are your leading work or your leading people. So what in your resume tells me, have you stepped up? So let me give you an example. If you're a college student, what are you involved in? Are you in collegiate DECA? Are you in a fraternity or a sorority? Are you involved with some sort of club? A, a, campus, newspaper, whatever it is, okay, that's great. All those things enhance your resume and tell me that you're not only doing school, but you're other, do, uh, lending yourself and your skills and developing your skills for other um, parts of, you know, your, your resume building. But I'm going to ask through what I'm reading to myself, are you stepping up and are you a secretary? Are you a treasurer? Are you a vice president? Are you the president? Are you the founder of that chapter? Okay, so what in your re what's in your resume? Once you come to the career fair, your work's already been done. You're just there to show me where you stand and, and, and what you have as far as in, in your resume. But my challenge to each one of you is before August 2nd, 3rd, before you go to career fair, what have you already built in your resume? Where have you taken leadership opportunities in your community, uh, within your family, at school, at work, uh, whatever it may be. So that's what I'm looking for uh, when, it, when I'm asking what's in your resume. And then again, what makes you stand out? Um, did you uh, launch a t-shirt company when you're in high school? Uh, most people don't put what they did in high school on a resume when they're trying to get a job as a professional within an organization. But I'd be curious to know what's unique about you. Um, you know, I see a lot of 4.0s uh, for college graduates. I see a lot of folks that have done, you know, buzz marketing or, uh, you know, been a controller or whatever it was. What else did you do? Did you do a task force to help with hurricane relief from Puerto Rico? Um, did you study abroad uh, in Brazil or India or Germany? Um, what makes you stand out? Each one of us is special, right? Each one of us as something that they want to scream at the top of their lungs, or maybe they just want to whisper if you're a little shy, right? Um, but you want to say, hey, I'm, I'm special. I'm bringing something to your organization. You should look at me. So what makes you stand out? One of the things that 
um, I want to make sure that I touch on here is having a resume that's updated, okay? I see a lot of resumes that don't have your last six months or your last year um, or the coolest project that you're currently working on. Um, that's important because that's a conversation starter, okay? Um, and if you have a resume that you emailed to me and it was last saved in 2016, it's not current. It's not updated. It tells me, have you not done anything to sort of build your, your skill set in the last two years or nothing that you're excited about or proud of? Um, so update your resume. Uh, it's super important. And when you're 21 to 40 years old, um, you definitely are a group or generation that is not afraid to go from one organization to another to find those next opportunities. But wouldn't it be wonderful if an organization offered you multiple career opportunities within the same organization? So another piece um, is for you to think about is when you're updating your resume, what's your email address? Okay, um, let's be professional with your email address. One of the best email addresses is first.lastname at Yahoo. And I understand you, there might be five or six numbers behind that. Uh, but make sure you don't email your resume and it says, you know, party hardy or chugalug at yahoo.com. Um, I might just sort of put that one aside. So, uh, all right, so we'll go on to the next slide. Okay, so just to, I'm curious to see if, uh, you know, this is, this is more from the HR side organizational development, some of the engagement research that has been done. So here's the question. So what's the number one reason why someone leaves their job? More pay, he had to move, to relocate, uh, there's a life event, um, you know, your, your parent uh, became ill, you want to be close to your parent, you're in Boston, they live in New Orleans, uh, unhappy with a supervisor, they're just not, you know, giving you what you need, tool-wise, development-wise, mentoring-wise, so on and so on. What do you guys think is the answer here? So we'll reveal it in about 10 seconds here. All right. So, yeah, when you do a review, and I've, I've done reviews for many, many years, I think anyone would not say, when you're doing like an engagement survey, an associate opinion survey, um, that everybody is being paid exactly what they want. You always think that you're of more value, right? I, I'm always going to check. No, you're not paying me right. I, I, I think I bring more value than what I'm being paid, right? Um, but actually, the number one reason why somebody leaves an organization, they're unhappy with their supervisor. So those 34% that answered um, uh, with the answer number four, unhappy with supervisor, that's the number one reason. And I can tell you that uh, somebody can offer you uh, $2,000 more, more next door or even $10,000 more. If somebody is happy with their situation, they're being challenged, they're giving uh, opportunities to grow, they're connecting with the CEO or with the chief global officer for their discipline, they're doing task force, they're traveling, or maybe you don't like to travel, maybe you like to um, you know, do something near, near home, right? Um, but when you're not being listened to, when you're not given the guidance, where you're not given the opportunity, that's actually the number one reason why folks um, leave. Again, pay, everybody's looking for a little bit more pay. Um, but uh, um, that's, that's a huge, um, and, and for those of you that are in the workforce, um, you know when a manager is treating you well and when a manager is ignoring you, right? Um, okay, so the next step for preparing for the career fair is Create a plan, okay? Um, what organizations get you excited? So if you're a finance or accounting professional, yes, there's the big four, but you know what? Every industry, every organization needs finance and accounting. It's just a fact of life. It does. So let me give you a little plug for Marriott, okay? And I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but, you know, I do work at Marriott, so I'm biased. Um, but I, I walk into a, a group of individuals that are looking for opportunities, and they're lined up at KPMG and EY. And I'm sorry, but those are great organizations. I am not shy to say there's some great organizations out there. 
but would you like to be in a office in downtown Columbus or would you like to be a director of finance in Maui? Those are some things that our organization can offer or maybe it's Spain or maybe it's Germany or maybe it's South Africa, or maybe it's um, you know Thailand or whatever you're interested in doing. All those opportunities are available with global organization. Um, so what organizations get you excited? Are they getting you excited because the people that are there um, understand the culture. You know, another reason why people leave is because you know the culture is just not inclusive, or or uh, the culture is just not uh, a, a one of development, right? Of taking care of each other. Um, so that's important. Do your research. Don't just go after the the most popular company or the first one to come on campus, okay? Um, or the first booth that you walk into at a career fair. Um, and understand the business, okay? Um, there are so many parts of the business. When we look at Merit International, uh, I think about, you know, Chef Hats and Bellman, yes, we always need, we always will need. Everybody needs to eat, everybody needs help, although, you know, rollers on luggage, which probably everybody here doesn't remember a time without rollers on luggage, um, you know, uh, everyone may need help um, at, a, at an organization. So you have um, revenue management, you have uh, development. Uh, we hire attorneys. We hire sales and marketing. In fact, we hire more sales and marketing professionals than any other discipline within the company. Uh, human resources, IT, 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 IT is huge. Uh, if you don't have a good command of uh, Excel, of social media, uh, and I'm talking in the business sense, okay? Um, if you don't uh, understand systems and how to uh, conduct webinars and, and those type of things. These are skills that are needed every day in the world of work. Um, so understand the business that you're applying to, okay? Do they do business just in the U.S., just in the Southeast region? Do they do business globally? Um, you know, what's their, their latest uh, opportunities that they have? And then once you are, when you go to a website, one of the best things is go to the website, right? Go to uh, Pepsi, go to DPS, go to um, Toyota. Um, okay, think of Toyota, I think of engineers developing cars, making cars, but what type of jobs do they have? So read the job profiles. Don't just learn about the organization. Read, when they, when they have a job posting, read what those job postings are. And you know what? The days at a career fair where you would hand your resume and I would go back to the office and say, wow, I met this great candidate. They're awesome, we need to hire this person. The problem is, is I don't know what you're interested in. You know. So read the job profiles because if you're gonna apply for a job, which is the first step and it's required of all of us to first apply for a job. You can't just be hired. You have to apply and go through the process. Maybe there's a drug test, there's a screening, there's a profile review that uh, you have to do. Uh, so it takes a little time, okay? But read the job profiles because the job profiles within sales and marketing or within revenue management or within IT will tell you what type of jobs, what's expected of you. And that makes you a more informed individual at a career fair that I can speak to, okay? Now, we're the superstars in your industry. If you want to be in buzz marketing, if you want to be uh, an engineer, if you want to be an architect, if you want to be an interior designer, who are the superstars in that industry? What does that require of you? Go to an association website about sales and marketing uh, executives, okay? SMEI. Uh, go to interior design publications. Uh, if you want to be in, in human resources, who are the superstars in churn? Who are giving uh, uh, presentations? Who are publishing work about trends in the industry and those type of things? So. Who it is that you want to sort of find as, as sort of corporate mentors out there? Um, who are trendsetters that are out there? And then what's new and exciting in the field or profession? You should know that. At, it, nothing kills it better at an interview when you sort of know some of the new buzzwords about some of the things, you know, about five years ago we started talking about innovation. What does that mean? It just means that you're looking at a, an issue from a different angle and you know getting input on something that will make it better, right? Um, that you'll find a solution. 
Um, but what are the buzzwords for the industry or the opportunities that you're looking for? The, those are important things to sort of have as part of your story or, or as part of uh, uh, your preparation for not only the networking you're going to do at a career fair, uh, but the discussions you're going to have afterwards. All right, so enough about research. Another quick poll. How many of you have been rejected by an autoresponder for applying for a job online? And I mean, like, sometimes it's right away, sometimes it's that same day. You're so excited, you apply for this job, you think, okay, I'm the person for this job. And then you go, thanks, but no thanks. Um, so this is all confidential, you know. Have you never applied online? Most of us probably have. Um, but uh, let's see what the results tell us. Uh, yes, 83%. Wow. A lot of disappointment out there, guys. Um, yeah. And you know what? And I work in human resources, so I'm not shy to say, um, but I think some of this process has taken the human out of human resources. Um, but on the other side, from the business case, um, we've seen that it's much more efficient. Uh, if you create the right profiles within your company, um, you really identify talent that fit the profile needs of that position. Uh, so it's just a reality of life. I don't think anyone is going back to having 500 recruiters uh, for one region. Um, so uh, the online tools, uh, the technology behind it, let me tell you, we hire PhDs, uh, organizational capability uh, folks uh, that help develop the profiles. But Yes, so it's always disappointing. Uh, nobody likes to be rejected. Um, but what do you learn from that? Um, networking is important. Uh, following up is important. So uh, we're going to talk about a few of those things. All right, so here we are. Huge career fair. Um, the National Urban League is having a career fair on the 2nd and 3rd uh, of uh, August. So. Hopefully, we will see everyone there uh, at the career fair. Um, and so, how do you find the organization um, that you're really excited about applying to, right? And what really happens at a career fair? Um, I have a question. It's not a poll, um, but just think if you know if, we're, if you guys are all in front of me and I can see your hands. How many can find the Marriott booth in this slide? All right, so what really happens at a career fair? The, the most important thing for you is to have a plan. Um, you know, even on a two-day career fair, it's almost impossible to be able to explore or talk to every company that's there. Uh, you're going to be rushed. They're going to see that you're, you're rushed. Um, you want to take the time. Who are your top five? Who are your top ten? Okay? Uh, and make sure that you are securing a business card, that you're talking with somebody within the organization that's not just human resources, but maybe represent the discipline that you're interested in. There's almost not a better connection than if you're an accounting professional, that you're talking with an accounting professional from that organization. In other words, you need to ask. Some companies, some organizations post like uh, signs and say, if you want to talk to somebody in sales and marketing, that's this line, over here is human resources, over here is IT, whatever it is. Um, if they don't, when you talk with that first person, see, you know, introduce them. Don't, don't say, hey, I don't want to talk with you. Have that conversation. But within that conversation early on, is there anyone from the discipline that I'm interested in? So that is one of the uh, best practices for Spend your time wisely at any one organization, okay? So I asked the question earlier. I talked about the agenda items. What does focus mean? I really kind of covered this, but focus means, um, you know, when you are talking about an opportunity, if I'm the recruiter from an organization, you say, well, what are you interested in? Oh, anything, okay? That doesn't help me at all. In fact, that's a disconnect. So what does focus mean? Focus means know what you want to do. And here's some advice. When you're going to, if you're looking to apply at 3M or Nationwide or Bank of America, 
or Lockheed Martin or whoever it is, get your foot in the door with the skill set you currently have. Because I can tell you that there's 50, 100, maybe there's 30 people that are applying for that same position. And if, some, if you're applying what I would say an aspirational uh, application, in other words, you so want to be the regional director of sales and marketing, but you've never led a group, you're a great marketing professional, but you've never led a group, you may not be the person that we would consider either first or second tier, okay? But if you ran a buzz marketing, if you're a buzz marketing manager, get your foot in the door with that because in the interview, they're going to ask you about the experiences you've had in that specific position, okay? So that is huge. What does focus mean? Focus means when you go to apply, you're not applying for accounting person because you, that was your manager and you're not applying for uh, then you know a front desk manager and then you're applying for uh, organizational development because that just is scattered it, it doesn't tell me what your focus is so if your focus is uh, I am a social media professional then get your foot in the door and and one day you want to be the director of sales or marketing uh, you want to be um, employment brand lead. You want to be the creative designer. But get your foot in the door in the skill set that you bring to the table. Okay, that is so important in a career fair. And then follow up and notice. How do you follow up? Secure business card, exchange business cards. Okay, I can tell you, Merritt International. We don't take resumes on the career fair floor. What I do is I give you my business card if you're interested. I tell you. Go to our website, look for the opportunities, and when you find those opportunities, now I want your resume, but electronically. Send me the job posting number, the title of the position, and the location. Is it in New York? Is it in Bangkok? Where are you applying for this job? Now I can go into my system and find who the recruiter is and say, hey, I met this young lady. I met this young man. I met this established professional and, and the National Urban League Career Fair and I am interested in uh, you taking a look at their resume. And what that does is in that pile of 50 or 75 or 100 resumes, it pulls your resume out of the pile. And I can't guarantee you that they're going to send you for an interview, but they're going to take a look at you. Okay? Um, so that's important. Secure business cards. Connect with people on LinkedIn. Uh, that type of stuff. Okay. All right. So... Just a, a little uh, plug here before we go to Q&A, and that is um, a little bit about Marriott International. Um, yes, we are always look for room operations. We're always looking for culinary. Um, but you know what? Uh, you got the All-Star Game coming to Washington, D.C. We have folks that have been working on that for a year, Super Bowl, World Cup, uh, those type of things. Guess what? Hospitality is greatly involved from a lodging perspective, from putting, off, uh, putting on events, from hosting you know, executives from organizations that are attending or trying to make those sales connections. Accounting and finance, if you want an accounting and finance career, let me tell you, you can write your, your own uh, career line within Merit International. We always struggle uh, securing accounting and finance. As I said before, sales and marketing, we hire more sales and marketing than any other. And if you are, uh, you know, good with your hands, engineering, always need engineering. I think that the, the the, the biggest growth within the company is IT and social media. It's amazing how has you know our cell phones, uh, tablets, uh, everything virtual has really changed our industry. So um, we do business uh, 120 countries around the world, uh, 6,500 hotels and growing. Uh, we have 650,000 associates. Last time I looked, uh, for everyone who's on the line and just curious. Uh, we had over 19,000 job openings open today, right now, and over, I think, 2,500 management level opportunities. So don't be afraid to get your foot in the door as a supervisor and then grow into that management position. So, all right. All right, one last uh, piece before I, I go to Q&A. If you're sort of curious, like you're in a role, but it's not really what you uh, studied in college or maybe that's a good thing, um, but you're trying to figure out, you know, what what am I really passionate about? There's an uh, organization that we partner with out of California, small 
uh, growing organization called Amavite, which is sort of loosely translated in Latin to mean uh, do it your love or follow your passion. And it's a great assessment tool. So if anybody's ever taken like Strength Finders 2.0 or Myers-Briggs, uh, this is another organization called Holland Occupational uh, Assessment. And it goes through it, it gives you a, a, a readout and say, based on the answers that you've provided, you may lend yourself to these type of careers. And then it shows, so it shows you the unique about you, but then it shows you opportunities are out there that sort of fit the profile that you you've created based on the answers that the assessment that you've taken. So a great little uh, app, if you'd like to download it, it's called Emma Vite. It's not a merit app, but it's an organization we partner with. So just a quick plug, and it, it's a cool deal. I've used it in high schools. I've used it in colleges. I've used it for what we call incumbent workers. So anyone from, you know, whatever age until whatever age. So uh, it's, a, it's a great tool and something that uh, you might want to do uh, once we hang up. So. All right, so I think the next slide is really just uh, Q&A. Um, so thank you for letting me uh, share with you some of ideas. Hopefully some of that is, is helpful. And I think uh, uh, Jody um, talked about a little bit earlier about um, some of the uh, uh, webinars that uh, you guys may have participated in the past. You know what? You don't have to have an Armani suit. Um, but if you have a suit, make sure you're sure your blouse is clean and pressed, okay? That's what's going to impress me, not what brand you have, okay? And some peripheries, some places are, are more casual, right? They're wearing polo shirts. And they're just showing you that they're more business casual friendly place. Still, dress the part, guys. Um, dress in, in nice, clean clothes, uh, press blouse or, or shirt, wear a tie. Uh, that's always impressive, even if the organization is not. So. Uh, just don't be confused because if they're all wearing T-shirts at Google and, and polos, still come professional, okay? Um, so open it up to the floor. Um, what questions uh, may you have? Well, Andy, uh, thank you so much. I think every time I do one of these, I wonder if I, you know, really should be, um, you know, listening in and taking more notes. I take more notes, I think, on all of these just to get better. Um, you have a lot of great questions today, so I want to thank our audience. Um, one of the, the main things is um, there seems to be a lot of questions about careers and ageism. Ageism seems to be be becoming a big issue like you know everyone seems to be looking for the new young Z millennial etc generations but what uh, opportunities um, or how can that you know how can being older work to someone's advantage versus disadvantage not only within Marriott but across the board that you've been seeing yeah right right so a uh, great question so yes uh, and you know what I, I, and probably even in my presentation um, you know, we get excited about uh, young new talent, right? Um, but you know what, guys? Um, baby boomers are retiring. Uh, Gen X is retiring and moving on. We always need wise professionals. We always need individuals with track records, okay? So if, that, if you're looking at yourself and you're 30-something or 40-something or 50-something or 60-something and you're wondering, you know, is an organization like Marriott or really any, I mean, there's some great organizations out there. So even though I work at Marriott, I, I network with a lot of great uh, recruiters from many different organizations. I can tell you that if you, I mean, I was just at National Association of Black Accountants, uh, career fair. guess what? We needed a senior vice president of finance. Well, you know what? Most college graduates aren't gonna fit the bill. So it just depends on what your skill set is, what your track record is, um, I, I would hope that we're attracted to the talent and not the age so so much, right? Um, mm -hmm. So it, don't be afraid to knock on the door uh, and say, hey, you know, I, I, I bring a lot to the table and, and tout that. Um, show that as a badge of, of, uh, of opportunity that you can bring into the organization. So, um, yeah, that's a great question. Yes. Uh, hey, guys, we hired 650 or so. Uh, new college graduates to sort of infuse, um, you know, that generation into our up and coming leaders, but they're, they're taking assistant manager roles. If you're a professional um, out of college, you're not going to uh, 
take that director or that regional vice president position. Right. That is for someone more seasoned. So there are opportunities. Now, yes, the opportunities for those, those more seasoned individuals are less, so they're much more competitive. Right. Yeah. They're, they're no, and, I, that's what it, and Andy, yeah. that's the whole thing. It's just trying to keep manage expectations on both sides. Those of you who are newer to the job market, you know, you believe you're qualified for positions that might be a little bit above your pay grade and skill set yet that you can grow into. And those of you who are kind of hesitant or even in the poll you took, Andy, uh, those of you looking for some new opportunities, take some risk you know, apply for something new, try something new, right? I mean, that's what right. the job market's about, especially those of you who seem pretty secure, you know, a job is not forever and some kind of, you know, some organizations and companies change and your job might not be as necessary. And so always working on some new skills are great. The next that question- That is so true. I bet yeah. you there are jobs <laughs> right now well, five years from now, that don't even exist. We don't even know what their names are. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so yeah. So always, always invest in yourself and, and continue developing. Right. And this is no slight to you, Andy, but even if I was happy at my Marriott job, I should always be looking for something because you also saw in your poll that there's a lot of people who are just unhappy with their boss or, you know, you're just looking right. for a different environment. It's not the actual job. There's other things that you deserve um, out of your career. Right. Absolutely. And Jody, you know what? I, I will tell you something, and this is a reveal is that we value, there are folks that come into our, organi our organization and they're here for three years and they just, for whatever reason, they they find another opportunity and then they go and they they, they gain some other career, uh, um, uh, skill sets, right? Mm -hmm. And then they come back knocking two, three years later. Guess what? We love hiring those folks. They know the organization. They have some outside perspective. They bring sort of a different uh, lens and experiences. I've seen folks leave an assistant manager, come back as a senior director, right? So yeah, and um, sometimes it, that, that hits the other point, Andy, that sometimes you have to leave to move up, that you don't always get the opportunity at the time because the bench is full, right? If your whole team is full and there's no place to move up to or around, um, which is actually an advantage of a large company like yours um, and other large companies that off, often there's more times to move around than not, but to take a chance. The next question right. actually. Is, let yeah. me just interject. Sure, sure. It's how you, it's how you leave. Yeah. Never burn your guys. If, if, if just because you found that great opportunity, they say, "Hey, you want to start?" They need for you to start tomorrow. Give notice and talk with your current employer. Let them know that, "Hey, I have this great opportunity," and and hopefully that new organization is going to respect the fact that you're respecting your current job. And one of the worst things in, and I know this is sort of on a tangent, but whenever you're networking, whenever you're talking to a career the worst thing to do is talk negative about the organization that you're you're unhappy with, or, or just you know keep that stuff to yourself. Correct. And say, hey, here's what I here's what I uh, gained. Here's what I'm learning. I love what I'm doing, or maybe you don't love what you're doing. So find a different way to say that. But I'm looking to explore. I'm looking to expand. I'm looking to move. Um, so. So these next few questions are directly for the career fair preparation stuff. So um, as much as one can prepare, and often a lot of companies do not reveal salary ranges and all of that, what's people want to know, what's a creative way to kind of ask about and inquire about salary besides, you know, let's just say you kind of know, oh, it's going to pay 50 to 70K. How do they find out, you know, can they ask something like that at a career fair? No, I, I, I would say no. The questions Me. of salary and benefit are for once you're doing an interview. Um, if they're not for the career fair, you know, are you guys hiring? Um, how much do you guys pay? That's just not, those aren't questions. Um, you, you should look at research and see mm -hmm. generally what certain positions uh, offer across an industry, across a, a discipline. Okay. Um, but now, you know, if you're getting serious with a conversation, um, you know, and you have a follow-up, um, that can be a follow-up question, um, specifically one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but there's just not questions that you, you should ask at a career fair. 
Totally agree. The next one is really kind of hits home to so some of the points you made about the resume, right? That is your entree point in most cases to the career fair. Um, for our career fair, we actually, uh, when people uh, register, we encourage and ask them to actually upload their resume so that we have it in our um, Urban League Jobs Network already. So those that are working our career fair have access to them anyway, ahead of time and throughout the career fair. So if you have met someone and they can say that it's already plugged in, you can look at it. But they're concerned with, if I was, let's just say, applying for a Marriott job and a Centene job and a, you know Edward Jones job, even though they might all be CPAs, um, mm -hmm. do I have to have something so customized? Should I bring, do I bring a more generic um, resume? Um, or let's just say I'm applying for two different kinds of jobs, a marketing job and a CPA job, because I'm making, trying to make a transition. How prepared or what kind of resume is best to have with you at a career fair? Um, and then often now are people, are companies actually even accepting them versus having you, you know, say, put them online at the booth? Like should right. you come so here digital and hard copy? <laughs> right. A lot of questions right. on yeah. resume. I try to condense it. So how many no, no, what kind, digital or hard right. copy and customized or general? Right. So the, the great question. So first of all, I think uh, it, it, it starts with a plan. Right. If you know that you want to apply for um, uh, global tax within several different organizations, okay. Um, then you should have a resume that talks about um, what you've done in that area, okay? And that resume could be the same resume that you give to five different organizations because, number one, if you follow what I'm what I'm telling you and what I'm sharing with you, um, you've done your research. You know that those job profiles exist within the organization that you're planning to go visit. You're planning to go visit because they exist, because you've done your homework, okay? Um, you can have a generic resume that just says, Here's who I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, uh, a regional sales manager for retail. Okay, great. Um, but is every organization you're going to apply to a retail organization? Do you want to customize your resume to talk more about your strengths as a sales professional as opposed to a retail industry professional? Okay. So focus. Again, focus. Uh, if if you're reading the profiles, you, you have you have a little bit less than a month now, guys, before the upcoming career fair, or before you go to a career fair. If you know that this is the job that you want, make sure the companies that you're going to go uh, apply to are actually posting those job openings. Again, focus. You might. I, I have done three or four resumes um, before. Uh, I'm sorry, received three or four resumes, and one of them is sort of generic. One of them is just about, oh, I want to work for Marriott, so it just kind of reads to Marriott. But you know what? What I'm looking for more is what's your background? Um, does it fill, fit the skill set that we're looking for for that profile? Um, so that sh should be your focus is what is the job that you're interested in? What is the career that you're looking to pursue? How are you trying to get your foot in the door? Um, that's hopefully that that helps with that question. It, it, I don't think you, it's necessary to have five different resumes, one for every company. I think that doesn't show focus for you, and I think it's hard for you. And and guys, you know, sometimes I, I wake up and I kind of wonder what am I going to be when I grow up. Uh, <laughs> still today, so it's hard enough if you're you know a college student or just uh, come out, but you should have an idea at least what type of opportunities and your resume should reflect what your interest is within that organization. Again, one of the put offs for recruiters is I'm open to anything. That doesn't really help me and it doesn't tell me that you're focused or even developing a skill set that will help me fill a specific job or profile. Okay. Um, so that you just have to, you have to talk with individuals within that discipline. You have to um, do the research, or maybe you're already doing that work and you're just looking for another opportunity. Now you have the skill set. Write it down in your resume. Be focused with that resume on that specific profile that you're looking for. And hopefully that profile matches 
um, the different organizations that you're looking to apply to. Hopefully that helps. Hello. Hello. Jody, if you're talking, I can't hear you. If anyone's talking. Hello. I'm sorry. Did you not hear me? No, I couldn't. Okay, now I can. Okay, yeah. sorry about that. Um, I was saying that a lot of folks want wanted to know more about uh, resumes in general. Um, a few more questions about resumes, that specific kind of the online part as well as the live. So live, the question was, you know, um, how do they look at cover letters? And I said that you're basically, you are the cover letter. You are now introducing yourself as if you were sending it online to give them an intro. But if they are now following up, now they have met you at the career fair, you have given them their card, your card, or they've met other recruiters and they're following up. Their, their cover letter should reflect that they have met you, right? Or whoever they have met to make that yeah, connection yeah. back to the career yeah, fair. Yeah, don't, a cover letter is not necessary to career fair. As a follow-up, absolutely. You want to send me your resume, have a cover letter, or have a note, personalized note. No matter who you meet at a career fair, even if you're like remotely interested, but you just had enough time to go meet somebody at 3M or at you know PepsiCo or at Toyota, follow up. Uh, hopefully, you're asking for that business card. Say, hey, very nice to meet you. You know, remember me. You know, we're both from Ohio. It was great to meet you. You know, hope you had a good career fair. Just simple, personalized note. Um, templates are, are not, I can read a template and, and know a template in a heartbeat. I want to know, I, I want to read something and spark, oh, yeah, I remember this young lady or I remember this gentleman that I met. Absolutely. Okay. And then um, keywords, because you brought that up about, you know, when you're applying online, a lot of folks will get rejected because of what you're looking for in your description. You know, it's all crypted via technology that if you said you needed five years of Spanish, two years of management, six, whatever, and you're not right. replying in that same way, um, you know, how does that play out as well, um, you know, in the live interaction and in interviewing you know um is it best to kind of stick to the script and knowing that that they, they have the years of experience and the skills that you're looking for um or would that come up more naturally so i, I think it goes back to a, a point that i was making earlier about your resume when i talk about your resume it's not really the, the actual paper that i'm talking about i'm talking about what's your current skill set what do you what have you accomplished okay when i'm going to do the interview I'm going to do like a star interview, which is situ situational task, um, action results. What's your story, beginning, middle, end, for each sort of task that I'm going to sort of explore to see if you have this competencies, um, you know, building relationships, leadership, whatever it is that you're looking for. So when you're applying for an opportunity, there are folks that are already, you know, established regional directors of sales or uh, controllers or uh, the head of global tax or whatever it is. So you know what? The resume should reflect the skill set that they already have. So if you want to have success, so 85% had rejection, I guarantee you most of those rejections is because you're applying for a position that you don't have the full current skill set yet for. Don't be afraid of getting your foot in the door and starting at a place where you have the skill set, even if you're leaving an organization because that's not what you want to do anymore. Plug it in, see what it looks like in that organization. And then I can tell you, like most recruiters, if you're successful in one area, chances are you're going to be successful in another area. So get your foot in the door and then find what that opportunity is and have those conversations with your supervisors, with your HR professionals. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm a great controller, I'm a great finance person, but what I really want to do is graphic design. Great. See if there's task force opportunities. Again, going back to the question that Jody is asking, that you guys are asking, why is it that my resume is not getting me the job that I'm looking for? 
you need to apply for the job that you have the full skill set for because with yes we all use these algorithms and they look at you know if you're not five years or if you have no experience managing or um, that type of stuff it's going to reflect that it's going to reflect that you don't have the skill set for the position that i'm looking for um, so that's hugely important to get your foot in the door first and then explore opportunities with that organization. Most people that, that I talk to, they want to come work for us, and I tell them, okay, great. So what what is it? Well, I'd love to be an event planner. Have you ever done that before? No. Well, what, what have you done? Well, I'm a finance person. Okay, get your foot in the door in finance and then transfer. I've had five different careers within Marriott. I started with the skill set that I had currently, and then I worked myself up. Wow. Yeah. So all the the rest of the questions kind of are directed directly. Uh, one is just in general. Let me just ask this first. Uh, you gave okay. a great resource of, and then I'll turn it all to Marriott questions, and we'll close out with that. Um, you gave us a great resource of the uh, um, uh, Amavite, but are there are there um, is there a resource that you use or that they should use? Um, to look for local and or national and or specific kind of career fairs. Like on Marriott's website, do you say we're going to these career fairs or are there sites that they should be looking to to look for them um, in wherever they are? Because our audience is national and sometimes international as well um, that you know of. And then I'll switch to all the Marriott questions. So any resources to find uh, career fairs and or invited like to be inv invited by companies for um, specific information sessions? Well, so there's pro professional associations that you can um, that you can uh, look at um, and that's one one way um, that you can um, search and look for opportunities and so look for mm -hmm. um, you know like if you're if you're an IT professional, you know, there's uh, all kinds of organizations that, that follow um, IT, okay? Um, industries, associations, uh, that type of thing um, are opportunities um, that you can um, search. Uh, let's see. I think um, one of the uh, areas that uh, that I go to is is who are the associations of the organization that you're looking to uh, work with uh, partners with. Uh, like if you go to our website, you can see, um, you know, all kinds of different organizations that we partner with. And then so we most likely will be involved in career fairs and organizations um, that we partner with. Um, yeah. So that's, no, that's always my advice as well. Yeah, to keep it, you know, go also where an industry related organizations so you said naba there's also you know accountants groups there's your marketing group so pay attention to those as for marriott andy specifically um you know i would like all of you guys to clearly follow up with andy on linkedin his name is out yes. there um and he's willing to push you into the right places we have some folks that are um, students who have had some opportunities to apply but believe that they weren't given the opportunity based on still being a student and maybe the level you have folks that might want to return to work who've been working for a while and are definitely in your seasoned category um, and wondering what opportunities are there for them and i do encourage right. you to up with Andy um, and then just in general you know your practices and you said earlier the areas that you guys are mostly looking for are in IT and social media at this point but clearly you have pockets of marketing and other things um, but are they regional and are you looking for specific kind of folks so oh my gosh yeah that up. great and great question because we're about to go a little over time but I wanted all the the Marriott stuff to come together. Okay, well, a couple of things just to leave everyone with. Uh, if you go to our website, um, again, last time I checked, we had 19,000 job openings. Uh, don't too, put too many filters, and I would say that for any organization you're looking at. That job that you're really interested in, maybe in Boston, and it just got filled. 
So it doesn't show, but it shows in Bangkok or it shows in LA or San Francisco or something like that. So it gets you a feel and you can read that profile of that opportunity. So don't put too many filters, even if you only want to be in New Orleans or only want to be in the U.S. Look at what opportunities your organization has. It becomes very informed of research for each one of you. Uh, number one, number two, when you're looking to apply or look into a career fair, make sure you're ready to go. Um, you know, if you're a college student and you're graduating in May and you're trying to apply for that opportunity that just was, wow, that's the job I wanted in December. When I post a job, it's because I'm trying to fill it right now. Um, so, um, you know, for internships for college students, December to February is when most people post their summer jobs. Uh, for a graduating individual, um, you know, I would say March, April, because if you're graduating in May, it'll take about six weeks to go through a hiring process. You know, there's folks to interview, there's assessments to do, and that kind of thing. If you're a professional looking to apply right away, make sure your resume is set. Make sure, again, and this is my advice. My advice is get your foot in the door with the skill set that you currently have. What are your strengths? What are your competencies right now? That's where you're going to have success, the most success, and then follow up. Okay, our sweet spot is about two weeks after you meet us. Um, not just send the thank you note. I would send that within that same two days, if not that afternoon. Uh, just send a quick thank you email. Uh, but follow up on the job that you posted within a couple weeks. I wouldn't follow up specifically on the job within the day because the hiring manager may not have seen it yet. Um, but you know how email is, everyone. Tons of emails, right? Um, and most systems, you know, use email to sort of flag us when somebody has applied. Um, but wait, wait a week or two, wait ten days, uh, and then uh, follow up. Um, so hopefully that helps. I know we've gone over, but I appreciate the opportunity. Again, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, and uh, uh, look forward to meeting you guys in Columbus. Fabulous. Well, Andy, I cannot thank you enough on behalf of the National Urban League, myself, Clarissa, who is behind the scenes here, but always keeping things going. I do want to remind everyone that the National Urban League's Career Fair is August 2nd and 3rd in Columbus, Ohio. It is free to the public. So even if you are not there, you have someone who's in the area, they could be Cleveland, they can be Cincinnati, tell them to drive on over, bring a friend, bring a family member, tell someone you know, and you can register early online so you don't have to wait at NULJobsNetwork.com. You can also look into the chat area right now, it should be tweet tweeted. Um, and then for those of you who cannot make it, and I know career fairs can be costly, still free, we are doing a virtual career fair live from our career fair in Columbus on August 2nd from 12 to 3 p.m. on Columbus time. So 12 to 3 p.m. August 2nd. Um, and you can register for that at nul.vfairs.com. Once again, nul dot vfairs.com for the virtual career fair. Um, please feel free also to reach out to me. I'm the only Jody Brockington on LinkedIn. If you have any more questions that you have um, about this and if you are unable to connect with Andy, um, we will loop you back into some of the Marriott folks. And also please upload your own resume to the Urban League Jobs Network resumes um, because the Andes of the world and those other corporate sponsors of National Urban League who are participating in our career fair have an opportunity to look at all of your applications before they even get to Columbus and throughout the year. So please post your updated, most updated one, as Andy was telling us. <laughs> and we look forward to staying connected with, once again, Columbus, Ohio, August 2nd through 3rd. And it is free. So we do not like to uh, limit anyone. It's free because of our sponsors like Marriott, um, Nationwide, Edward Jones, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there are so many jobs opportunities there, and we actually do make offers live from our career fair. Not all of our companies do it, but there are plenty that will. So thanks again for joining us, Andy. Your information was invaluable. And on behalf, again, for the National Urban League, myself, and the Urban League Jobs Network, we thank you so much for your time um, and your fabulous information. Look forward to seeing you. you all in Columbus. <laughs> Have a great day. Okay, excellent. Thank you.